tackle some of these things that I'm doing within the home and necessarily that can really help your business. Now, when you guys are in the houses and a lot of, I see a lot of times that I used to be somebody who was guilty of this myself is that when you are in the house, a lot of times we get done, we close the business. Hey, Miss Johnson, we got you protected. You got that peace of mind knowing that you're fit in. When we get to that very end where we want to ask for a referral, we, we kind of get all clammy. We kind of get all tense and we feel odd about the way we ask the question. And when you ask a question kind of odd with these clients, they're going to tend to necessarily give you rebuttals. They're going to tend to say, hey, no, I'm going to have to reach out to my brother. I'm going to have to reach out to my sister. So, you know, when I necessarily do talk to my clients in my past, I would say, hey, Ms. Johnson, we got you protected. Hey, you know, I, I was able to help you out and save $12 within the home today. Uh, you know, I just wanted to know if you had any friends, family members, church members uh, that you know of that I could help them uh, like I did here for you today. And, you know, a lot of my families, every once in a while, they will go ahead and give me a name or number. But more often than not, that I necessarily got, uh, you know, the rebuttal of necessarily, hey, I need to talk to my son. I need to talk to my daughter. I need to talk to my my neighbor before I gave out her number. And I never really seemed to get much, you know, anywhere with that. So uh, later in my career, you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands and thousands of appointments. And Nessa, I started incorporating Nessa, my referrals within the actual policy itself. So when I would necessarily be getting the client to pick the coverage, how much premium they wanted, uh, necessarily go ahead and sign on the dotted line, and I was kind of finishing up that phone interview or you know just the application itself, I would go straight into my referral, uh, necessarily saying that it was part of the actual policy. And a lot of you guys who are on this uh, this live training, you guys know that and heard of this thing called emergency responders list. But the way I used it when I was at the beginning of my career to where I am now is that I was really able to implement it where it was more of a, something that was required instead of me of actually asking them. So when you ask somebody, uh, you know, for anything, you know, you're going to give them, you know, ample, uh, you know, opportunities to tell you something that you don't want to hear. But when you say that it's a part of the policy, necessarily, you're going to have a lot of your clients having no problem going ahead and pulling out their, you know, their, their Rolodex, their, you know, their, their, you know, their cell phone with all their phone numbers and everything that you need. So this is kind of what I would do in the home. And, you know, if, you know, try this and see if this isn't effective for you, because I'd always get at least four to five uh, referrals, every house that I sold. I didn't like getting referrals from uh, clients that I didn't sell because, you know, for whatever reason, they didn't buy from me. And for me to go into that next friend's house, you know, I had to build, you know, the rapport, I had to start all over. But when you sold, you know, your, you know, the brother, the sister, the aunt, the uncle, the grandfather, you know, the mother, the daughter, whatever it may be, you already have built rapport with them. And when they necessarily call their family member, sibling or friend, you know, they're already kind of letting them know about who you are and what you represent, which makes it a lot easier for you to walk in the home and necessarily capitalize and make that sale. So when I would be in the house and after, you know, kind of give me an example, Ms. Johnson, we got you that $10,000 of coverage. We got your family protected. You got that peace of mind knowing that when you put your head on that pillow tonight, you know that if the good old Lord takes you, it's your family protected. Now, before I get out of here, I want to make sure I take care of uh, what I call is the emergency responders list. And what this is, is God forbid, if something ever does happen to you, I want to, I necessarily need four to five names of your, uh, your friends and your family members so I can let them know that you put them on the list. Well, what this list means is that I'm going to reach out to your, your sister, your, your brother, whoever they put on that list. And I'm going to let them know that I'm your agent and for them to save my phone number. So God forbid, if something does happen to you, they can reach out to me and let me know, Ms. Johnson, that you passed away. And I can make sure I can contact the insurance company and we can go ahead and get that money, uh, you know, within 72 hours tax free to your family. Because I don't know if you ever heard, but some insurance companies I've heard of some horror stories where families had to wait three or four months before they got their money. And I want to make sure that we can, uh, we, we don't have to go down that road. And when I say it like that, and the way I, you know, when I go ahead and make it part of my presentation, you know, these people are going ahead and pulling out their phone books, they're pulling out that Rolodex, and they're giving me all that information. It's not that I'm asking you guys. I'm not asking for referrals. I am saying that I have to have them. And when you when you deliver it that way, and you say it's part of the policy, hey, Ms. Johnson, before we before I go ahead and wrap everything up, we have to set up your emergency responders list. Oh, what is that, Sean? Well, hey, what it is, Ms. Johnson, is, is basically 
God forbid if something happens to you, I want to make sure your family gets this money within 72 hours tax free. So I'm going to be reaching out to your friends and family, letting them know that they put you, you put them on their emergency responders list. And God forbid if something does happen, they're going to have my number. They're going to be able to call me. Hey, Sean, this is Teresa. You know, my mother passed away, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? I'm going to contact the insurance company and we're going to get that money back to your family. And that's why we're getting this set up here today. And guess what? I don't get no, well, I got to reach out to my son and I can see if he'll give me your phone number or I got to talk to my neighbor. Guess what? They're just ripping out. They're giving me the phone numbers. No, no questions, no rebuttals. I get those. So when you're collecting four or five of these in every single home that you're selling and depending on your skill set, maybe you're closing three apps, maybe you're closing five apps, maybe you're closing eight apps a week. Could you imagine Nestle being to add an additional five presentations to your, to your weekly basis, what would that do to your business? How much more money would you generate? And the thing is, it's not necessarily a lead that you had to pay for, right? It's free, you know, especially where we are as independent brokers. Uh, for some of us who may be on this call, you might be captive, sorry for you. But for the ones that are independent, that have access to all these carriers, we have to spend money for, you know, we have these, you know, higher commission levels than these captive agencies, and we have to pay for our leads. You know, you are a business owner. You have to invest in your money. You have to invest your money in your leads. But at the same time, you know, what if you get a lead drop that doesn't give you all the leads that you were expecting? Maybe this batch of leads that you have, maybe you have some clients that are sick. Uh, maybe this batch of leads, you have some clients that necessarily are taking a vacation. You cannot help that. And the company that you're getting the leads, they can't predict these things. Even when they put these income filters with 25, 70K, all these other options that they do when they try to do these uh, target audience is that when they do that, there's some, there's some simple things that fall through the cracks and they can't necessarily predict if your client's healthy, they're, you know, they got a checking account, you know, all these things and above. And it's so important that you actually have these referrals when you do have a batch of leads or, a, you know, uh, you know, 20 leads that you just purchased from your company, your IMO. And the next thing you know that some of these numbers are disconnected. Maybe you're calling them and you're the fourth agent that's reaching out to them. You know, these aren't the easiest sales. And when you don't have quality leads or you're not necessarily getting in a lot of homes, you got to maximize every single time that you close a, a family member, right? So when you necessarily make this part of your presentation, you necessarily make the emergency responders list basically right after you made the sale, right after you did the phone interview, whatever product that you're using for your business, you want to do this emergency responders list and say that it is a part of the policy. Not asking, not, you know, can you please give me four to five names? You are requiring these. And when you make it like this, when you require it and you actually ask these type of questions and you demand it, guess what? You're going to get it. And you guys are going to see the type of results when you try these little things. And I know a lot of y'all have necessarily tried these little tips and tricks that I do on these, these training videos. And also necessarily uh, when it comes down to, you know, some of the advice I put on there that I type up, this stuff works, you guys, you know, I don't just make this up so I can sound cool. It's that there's, there's some psychology behind this. And when it comes to the art of the sale and uh, you know, when you necessarily start understanding what your clients are thinking and more or less, you know, what they're necessarily, what they're going to do when you can go ahead and necessarily put this part of the policy, you're going to see some different results. Uh, as for, you know, for some of y'all, you know, there's different ways that we can develop leads as well. You know, referrals are huge. We can necessarily do this, make this built in within the policy. You're going to get four to five every single time. But, you know, for some of y'all, you know, for the, the clients that you are knocking on the doors or going to their houses and maybe you sell, uh, you sell that client, you sell Ms. Johnson on that cul-de-sac. What I want you to do is I want you to go knock that neighbor right beside them. I want you to go knock the neighbor on the other side and then knock the neighbor right across the street. They call that the T method. This isn't something that I developed. This has been part of the, the industry for years. Just a lot of people kind of neglect this, maybe because they're nervous, they're timid, whatever it may be. But when you sell a client and you go to the neighbor's house and you show up at their house and... Hey, how you doing? Oh, who are you? Hey, hey, Miss Johnson, my name's Sean Fogelson. You show them your badge. You show them your license agent. Hey, just want to just drop by. I was helping Teresa, your neighbor over here. She actually asked me to come by here and see if I could assist with just setting up a retirement services and making sure that she had all of her arrangements set up. And I just wanted to drop by because she was letting me know that she was concerned about you and making sure that you had everything taken care of. And I just want to let you know that did you receive one of these cards in the mail? 
Oh, you didn't? Oh, wow, my company said that you were supposed to be receiving this. Well, this is some really important information. I'm actually really busy, uh, Ms. Johnson, but I'm actually going to be back in the area tomorrow seeing some other families that necessarily are looking for the same information where I can necessarily put them in a position where they can, you know, be in, a, you know, be in a better position they are now, have their families protected, and I'm going to be in the area. What's the best time I can drop by and get this information to you? Now, you guys, is this going to work for every client? No, but this is a great way just to necessarily get out there. If you're noticed where if you're knocking doors and, you know, a, a cul-de-sac, you ever notice that there's people looking through the blinds and they're wondering, like, hey, who is that guy? And, uh, you know, I've had people where I'm out there knocking doors where when I was, you know, younger, I didn't have leads or – uh, the leads that I was working, they weren't good. So I had to necessarily go and knock a bunch of random folks. And when, what I necessarily would see happen was that some people walk outside and be like, hey, what are you doing out there? And then, you know, like, hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm the senior benefits coordinator. I'm just trying to drop by, introduce myself, let everybody know I'm taking care of this community. And I just want to make sure that everybody's protected and make sure they have all their arrangements set up. So I don't know if you got everything taken care of you, but I'd like to necessarily come by here again and just go over that information. I don't know if you have everything squared away, but that's my job. And I just want to make sure that when I leave you, you're in a better position. You know, you can say whatever you want. Just there's a certain thing about the way you hold yourself, the way you smile, the way you carry your uh, your attitude, your charisma, all that makes a big difference when you're talking to random folks. Perception is reality. Put your game face on, put some clean clothes on, look sharp, look the part, and you know what? You might necessarily develop some new uh, you know clients that you never would have in the first place if you never had the kahunas to go out and do it. Is it scary to go talk to random folks? Is it scary to knock random doors? Yes, it is. But the more you do it, the more – you, you get familiar with it because the biz, this business is all about becoming uncomfortable. If you are comfortable with, with your business right now, you are not growing. So you always got to expand. You always got to learn. Look, I've been doing this for a long time and necessarily, you know, it takes a long time to necessarily know all the ins out in this business. But if there's anything that you can really get good at and do it at a high level, it's making sure that you are going out there and scheduling appointments and making sure you are knocking doors and getting referrals because, you know, when you have those off weeks, these referrals can make, make the difference of you losing that consistent $2,000 a week, that consistent $3,000, $4,000, whatever your number is. But there are lulls. There's peaks and valleys in this business. And referrals, uh, doing it at a high level and doing this and implementing it within your business, you're going to stay more consistent. You're going to be writing more business at a high level. And that's what we're all trying to achieve. You know, we didn't get in the business to necessarily receive loans or, you know, get chargebacks, whatever it may be that we run into. And, you know, when we do get these chargebacks, what, what are some of the best things that we can do to overcome them? Well, for one, we necessarily need to go talk to that client and see if we can protect that business. But two is you write right through it. You know, I had times where I was writing so much business that necessarily I didn't have time to go check up on Mr. Peterson that I had a chargeback. I would just go out there and I would keep writing. You know, they say the best way to get through any problems is produce volume. And when you can produce volume on a consistent basis and you have a persistency of at least 75% or better, you know, you're going to be in a good position where you're going to be to the good every single week. You're going to be investing in your business, but not only that, getting a good return. And that's what this is all about, right? We didn't get our licenses to, to not make any money, right? Of course not. So, you know, I'm going to go over this one more time before I finish this up. I'm going to let you, let you guys ask some questions. If you guys can, shoot, you know, shoot me some more like buttons. Uh, you know, give it a thumbs up. Also, go ahead in the commentary. Uh, if you have any questions about what I'm talking about, go ahead and shoot that in there. So when I get finished with this little, uh, this little skit one more time, so you guys, for some of you guys that might just hop on here, is that I'll go ahead and answer some of those questions at the end. So, all right, you go ahead. You're in the house. You're sitting with Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson, here's the $8,000 of coverage. Here's the $10,000 of coverage. Here's the $12,000 of coverage. Ms. Johnson, my personal opinion, I think you need that $12,000 of coverage. You're circling that, $68.97, blah, blah, blah. She goes and says, oh, Sean, I think I'm going to go with the $12,000 of coverage. Absolutely, Ms. Johnson. What's your middle initial? And then I start taking all that information down. Uh, what's your social address? I'm going through all that, collecting all the information on the application. And then... I love using Royal Neighbors, so I'm going to go ahead and do a phone application. I call up Royal Neighbors of America. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, I like to do a POS app for Royal Neighbors. Okay. Then they go ahead and uh, ask me for my agent writing number. They confirm who I am. And then I take my application, and then I start plugging all the information to the, to the representative. Uh, once she goes ahead and collects that information, she's saying, hey, Sean, can you go ahead and pass the phone to Miss Johnson? 
Absolutely. At this point, you guys, putting it on speakerphone because I want to hear everything uh, where I can necessarily guide my client so they don't make a mistake while they're on the phone because some of our clients, they try to be funny. They might want to necessarily open up and say some things they shouldn't when they didn't necessarily advise you earlier. Now they're getting declined. So a lot of times my client, I'll put them on the speakerphone and they'll say, hey, how you doing, Miss Johnson? Oh, hey, how you doing? And then she's going through, she's confirming her date of birth, her identity, her address, all that information. Then she gets to those health questions. You guys might think it's cheesy, but when I get to these health questions and I'm dealing with clients on the phone, I will literally on the back of the application, I'll write yes or no. And I'll literally look at my client while they're, they're listening, hearing on speakerphone, and they'll go through the health question. Do you have HIV or AIDS or you know, uh, ARC complex, blah, blah, blah. And I'll literally be pointing at it. No, no. And I, and I literally do this for every one of my clients because I feel like a lot of my seniors, they just screw up and they, oh, yes. Oh, oh no, I don't have AIDS. And then necessarily they got to go through the questions again. So I'm just like, no, don't say no. And then they'll go through all the questions. And at the very end, they'll say no again. And they'll say, hey, pass the phone back to your agent, Sean Fogelson. They put me on the phone. Hey, how you doing? I take it off speakerphone. And now I'm like kind of just sitting over there. I already know she's going to get approved. And then all of a sudden they say, yes, uh, Ms. Johnson is approved. Her policy number is 345-789-23. And I'm like, Ms. Johnson. I'm getting her all excited. She's like, yay, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> I'm just joking. But, uh, you know, and then after that, after I uh, go ahead and close that, we got our policy approved. I know I'm getting paid. Who doesn't like uh, knowing they're going to get paid? She's, she's got her policy approved. She's excited. At this point, I go ahead and say, Ms. Johnson, what we need to do now is, hey, we're good. You're approved. You got the preferred rate. You are so healthy. You know, I try to make my clients laugh. They're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I am healthy. And uh, after that, I go ahead and necessarily, uh, you know, pull up the emergency responders list. I say, hey, uh, what we need to do now, last but not least, is that we need to set up your emergency responders list. I need four to five names of your friends and family, okay? And what this is for is, is that necessarily, God forbid, if something does happen to you, I'm going to reach out to your friends and your family members that you put down on this list that I have to have. This, this is necessarily to complete this policy is I'm going to reach out to them and let them know that you put them on the emergency responders list. Uh, I'm going to call them up, uh, Teresa, and I'm going to let them know that, hey, I'm your agent, that you necessarily uh, told them that you're going to put them on the emergency responders list. And God forbid if something ever happens, make sure they save my phone number so they can call me and let me know if anything happens. The reason why I'm doing this and why we require you of this is because we want to make sure that if something does happen to you, when your family member reaches out to me and lets me know that you did pass, is that I'm going to go ahead and contact the insurance carrier because that's what I do. I'm your agent. I'm going to be your agent for life. And at that point in time, I'm going to reach out to the insurance company and make sure your family gets paid that money within the next 72 hours tax-free. Now, I don't know if you ever heard of these horror stories, Ms. Johnson, but there's some insurance companies where families have passed away and it's taken them three to four months necessarily to have to wait to get that money. I don't want that to happen to you. So do you mind going ahead and get those names for me right now? And I'll just sit there. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, can I get those lead? Can I get those referrals? You know, when you ask this stuff weird, you know, your clients are going to give you that, you know, I know I got to contact my brother. I got to contact my sister. I don't feel they feel comfortable about giving out their phone number. And when you ask them, Hey, Miss Johnson, Hey, uh, you know, can I get some, you know, some of your friends, church members, family that I can necessarily help out like I helped you. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get that rebuttal saying, hey, I got to talk to my sister. I don't know if she feels comfortable about giving out you know, her phone number. She might get mad at me. But when I deliver it the way I just said it to you guys, guess what? They pull out the Rolodex. They pull out Nestle, the cell phone, and they give me all those contacts that I need. And guess what? I just got four or five new names of a person that I just sold. And when I call up these clients, and this is the last step before I go ahead and hop off here in a sec, this is how you call these leads is that – you're going to call up and you got your emergency responders list. You sold Ms. Johnson, which might be their brother, sister, aunt, uncle, whatever, who it may ever be. Okay, hey, ring, ring, ring. Hey, is this uh, Kathy? Hey, who's this? Oh, hey, how you doing? This is Sean Fogelson, the senior benefits coordinator. I actually took care of your mother, uh, Ms. Johnson, and uh, she, actually, uh, she actually put you down on her emergency responders list. And she wanted to make sure that if anything ever happened to you, that if you can, save my phone number in your uh, – save this number, 
this is my direct line in your phone. So if anything ever happens to your mother, please reach out to me so I can go ahead and get y'all's family that money tax free within the next 72 hours. But your mother also asked me, she wanted to make sure that you had everything taken care of. She wanted to make sure that I could take care of you like I took care of your mother. And more or less, I'm actually going to be in the area tomorrow seeing some other family members, uh, necessarily in your area. And I was just trying to figure out the best time maybe I can drop by and help you out like I took care of your mother. Now, when you get these four or five referrals, now you're not going to get every single appointment. But the thing is, if you're selling five apps a week and you're getting 20 to 25 extra referrals and actually leads, well, you didn't pay a dollar for them. And two, you're probably going to schedule out of those 25 leads, you're going to schedule one out of four to one out of five, depending on your skill set. And for some of you guys, you might even be a lot better than that. But I'm just trying to give you ballpark figures. So for every one to four to one to five leads that you get, those referral leads, you're going to schedule appointment. So when you're doing this and you, like I said, you have those low weeks, you have those off weeks, and sometimes you might just collect all these referrals, not even call them, and maybe the one week you had a bunch of crap leads come in, now you got, you know, 50, 100 leads that you can call through and necessarily set up new appointments for your business. And I'll tell you, I'm telling you, if you guys try this, this is going to work for y'all. So uh, as for anybody, does anybody have any questions for a hop off here tonight and uh, go relax? Any questions out there? I'll give you guys about 30 seconds to a minute to shoot something up. Uh, shoot, shoot something up. If not, I'll hop off here and we'll do another training sometime later this week, if not next week. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys hopping on here, listening. I hope this really helps your business. I hope it improves your sales. You know, if it helps you get an additional one to two sales a week, I know I did my job. You know, that's going to necessarily put your income to an extra 500 to a thousand a week. And who couldn't use an extra thousand dollars a week for their business? So, uh, till next time, I'll see you guys, and I appreciate you guys hopping on here. See y'all later. Yeah.